Hi kids, it's Mrs. Boone here and I am here to share a little bit of base studies with you tonight. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I love base studies like kids love Christmas. So I'm a little bit heartbroken that we can't um, be together in person for base studies, but I'm also excited that I can share a little tradition of base studies with you tonight. Um, anyone who's been on a base studies trip with me knows that I, at some point during the trip, whether we're canoeing or camping or even in Peru, I gather the students around for a story time. I usually read part of a chapter book, but for tonight, I've chosen to read a book about moons. Um, I have a special place in my heart for, for the moon, full moons in particular. Um, and I think it started when, you know, as a small girl, as a small child, um, I was afraid of the dark. I would be inside the house. I would have all the lights on inside the house and I would look out and everything would be pitch black and scary. But then I realized that things were a little less scary and a little less dark if I were to just step outside. Um, and I also realized that if I, if I was brave enough to step outside and step off my porch and have a full moon, then I was really in a pretty magical place. So tonight I'm reading a story about the different moons and their names throughout the year. Um, I'm doing this because last night was a full moon, but it was also really, really cold and rainy last night. So I'm doing this tonight and sharing a story with you in celebration of base studies. Um, so I'm going to um, get the technology figured out. I'll share my screen. And while I'm doing this, I want to make sure that everyone goes outside. Take your computer outside. It's not the best thing. I wish that we could be gathered around together and I could just read you a story with a headlamp, but, um, but this will have to do. So go outside, I mean it, I'm outside. I've got a blanket around me, it's cozy, it's warm, it's nice. So go outside and let's have a story. I'll get started. Okay. I think we're ready to go. Today, I will be reading When the Moon is Full, A Lunar Year by Penny Pollock and illustrated by Mary Azarian. Okay. All right. Full moons come, full moons go, softening nights with their silver glow. They pass in silence, all untamed, but as they travel, they are named. January, the wolf moon. The weather chills, the night is long, wolf lifts his head in lonely song. His notes float high, his notes drift low, mournful in the moonlight glow. Native Americans believed that wolves became restless in January. February, the snow moon. Snow falls all day into the night, snuggling the world in downy white. Old man moon hides his face behind a curtain of winter's lace. February is a month of heavy snow. March, the sap moon. Cold nights, warm days, sap is sure to run. Moon looms in the branches, waiting for the sun. Native Americans and the early European settlers collected sap for syrup in March. April, the frog moon. Frogs sit in the marshes, throats bellowed tight, feeling quite romantic, calling through the night. Come, my love, my love, my love, come be mine tonight. In April, life bursts forth following the cold of winter. May, the flower moon. Lilies of the valley ring each silent bell. 
when May's bright moon lightens up the dell. Furry footed creatures scurry here and there, dancing to the music they can hear quite well. Many flowers bloom in May. June, the strawberry moon. We feast all night in moon spotlight, forgetting all our foes, trampling, tramping on the berries that squish between our toes. Strawberries ripen in June. Native Americans and the European settlers collected wild berries. July, the buck moon. Young bucks in the hayfield, antlers held aloft, moonbeams slanting down, show them velvet soft. Bucks sprout their first antlers in July. August, the green corn moon. Moonbeams touch the cornfield, laying shadows stripe by stripe down the endless rows of corn, tall and green and ripe. Corn was the basic food for most Native Americans. It ripens in August. Many tribes celebrated the green corn festival. September, the harvest moon. Squirrel rest in an ancient oak, tail wrapped round her like a cloak, looking over moonlit field where Mother Earth's generous yield of endless acorns, nuts, and seeds is quite enough to meet all needs. September marks the final gathering of most crops. This is celebrated in many cultures. October, the hunter's moon. Hush, young hare, beware, take care. Danger fills the night. Pray a cloud will shade the moon, putting out its light. In October, the moon rises quickly, adding to the light of the setting sun. This gives um, hunters extra time to hunt. November, the beaver moon. Black and icy pond, mirrors moon so round, while hidden in the beaver's lodge, coziness abounds. Beavers were important to Native Americans who hunted them for food and to sell their skins. December, the long night moon. December moon floats on clouds crest as if to take a little rest. No one sees this, no one knows, except some sleepy eyed old crows. December nights are the longest nights of the year. Right, and that's the end of our story. Um, again, I'm just so sorry that we can't be together to do this in person, but I hope you enjoyed a story. Um, even though I think the full moon was last night, it's going to be coming up shortly here. And um, take a chance, get outside, look at your shadow in the moon, turn off your headlamp, um, enjoy it. So I can't wait till I see you all again. Happy base studies, everybody.